Excelling Axor is um, actually the first in class uh, selective inhibitor of uh, this protein. Uh, this protein is called uh, exporting one. And uh, this protein is like the function is, uh, think about the chaperone, uh, uh, carries out uh, from the nucleus uh, uh, different type of tumor suppressor proteins, oncoproteins, uh, glucocorticoid receptor. And so the cells don't go to the regular cell death, they don't die. And so selinexor, and this protein is highly expressed in um, myeloma cells associated with the poor prognosis. So selinexor inhibits this protein. So uh, this pretty much this protein, this tumor suppressor protein, etc., don't leave uh, the nucleus. And so the cells will eventually go to apoptosis, which is uh, they die, the regular, you know, do their uh, cycle of cell death. <laughs>
uh, when uh, you use the Selinaxor in a weekly rather than bi-weekly, uh, th there are some GI, but they were all uh, grade one and two actually, very manageable, so less of the nausea, the vomiting, uh, the weight loss. So we didn't have, we only had a couple of patients with hyponatremia, which was, you know, one of the side effects in this uh, STORM trial. Uh, we had myelosuppression. I think uh, thrombocytopenia remains one of the major toxicity of uh, the different combinations. We support patient aggressively. We give actually M plate weekly, maintain the platelets level. Um, in fact, two of the dose limiting toxicity at the higher dose were thrombocytopenia, and we continue to observe some thrombocytopenia throughout. I uh, didn't mention that yesterday there was also the presentation, the oral presentation with Christine Chan, uh, was part of that arm with the selinexor, pomalidomide, dexamethasone, also uh, leading to a 56 uh, overall response rate in patients. Um, uh, you know, kind of sensitive to pomalidomide, however 30% were exposed to pomalidomide. So again, we see another uh, oral, uh, very promising combinations. So, uh, I, I think uh, in my experience uh, working with the Selinaxor now for a few years, I noticed that the first couple of cycles are probably the most critical adjustment, and we're trying to push the dose, you know, um, during the, the first couple of cycles. The response is very rapid. And then uh, with aggressive supportive care and dose adjustment, as I say, I have a patient going for three years. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, as long as you uh, aggressively supports patients with antiemetics, uh, fluids, proper dose adjustment is actually relatively well tolerated overall, is by mouth once a week. So um, I really, and particularly with the carfilzomib or the daratumumab, I didn't have any major uh, toxicities besides the aspected one. The Selinaxor was approved in combination with uh, DAXA here in the United States as a bi-weekly uh, administration with the overall response of 26% in very heavily pretreated patients. Now in the combinations, we're going a little bit earlier, once a week, and you know, we don't have uh, many of the side effects that we're seeing uh, uh, with the bi-weekly administration. I think that is an important point because when uh, the drug, uh, the combination was uh, approved, everybody was concerned about management of toxicities. But I, I have a, a, actually a, a more positive uh, experience. So uh, I think the carfilzomib, dexamethasone, selinaxor combination could be a, an important triple combination for patients uh, exposed and refractory to daratumumab. Uh, as I mentioned, about 67% were exposed to daratumumab, 50 were refractory, and uh, you know, uh, daratumumab is going early. Uh, in the upfront setting, already approved uh, uh, transplant, uh, uh, ineligible, you know, with the Maya, etc. Uh, and and so we see more and more patients exposed to daratumumab, and uh, and we have data showing that these patients, after failing daratumumab, they really don't perform well. They had a difficult time, and so I think this combination could be a promising combination as a sequential next step for some of these patients.